Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So in a video that I did recently, there were three videos, Nikon restricting customers to using OEM batteries, Nikon taking down a eBay ad that somebody made for a lens, for a used lens that they were selling using the eBay Vero program, and Canon refusing to provide a customer for a screw. And in this video, I'm talking about why I prefer Sony cameras, because they tend to have at least in the past, they had a much better take on repairability. So Canon is telling this customer, I mean, okay, not only does Canon do a lot of limit limiting to what type of lenses you can use with their cameras, but they also wouldn't even provide a customer for a screw that was willing to pay for it. Nikon has been very restrictive with repair in the past, on top of the whole battery nonsense. One of the things I liked about Sony is that the Sony camera I got when I first started taking YouTube seriously about 10 years ago, you can find this for it. So check this out over here. This is the service manual. It's not the normal manual, it's the service manual. You have all the error codes in here, you have exactly how it's put together, it shows you how to take it apart with all the different little pieces over here, and every single piece is a part number. And then when you search, let's say I want to find the HDMI port because I broke the HDMI port on my camera, you can actually search HDMI and eventually it'll bring you to the connector. So you can get the connector by itself or the actual board. If you're me and you don't want to break the board, you can do this. And then you can go over to Sony's website over here. This is Sony Service Plus. I'll admit this website is a bit on the old side over here. You can just tell by the fact that the word contact and login are blurry, that this website was probably made in 1997 and very poorly ported to whatever technology they're using for the site in 2023. But it, it, you, you, could, you could just tell from this that this, is, this, this website is old. But if you actually want parts, you can click on parts and you take the part number that was in the document and you hit enter. And right there, I can buy the part off of the schematic for my 10-year-old camera. Now, you may think $34.40 is a lot, but they're giving me the entire manual on how to service my camera, and they're allowing me to buy the individual piece that I need to fix my over 10-year-old discontinued Sony camera. And I think you could save some money if you buy the port by itself, which is only 16 bucks. I'd I, I, when I fixed it, I just bought the entire assembly. Also, be honest with me here. When's the last time you saw a website that's this responsive? I click Home parts, repair, like everything loads immediately because it's not this infinitely scrolly bullshit website that you have nowadays where it's shoved with megabytes of crap that you don't actually need. Do you know what else I like about this website being so old? What I like about it is it really drives home this is how long it's been since repairability was a part of our culture. When you look at it, this website that looks like it was engineered for a 640 by 480 CRT that comes with your Dell Dimension 233 in 1997, this website with whatever this and not anti allies font is over here that's all jagged and shit that really does look like it came out of the internet of 1997. All of this over here, this looks like a website that was made almost 30 years ago. The reason this is so impactful to me is because it serves as a reminder that it's been that long since we valued repairability in our culture. This website has never been updated to look modern or new because repairability and things being fixable is not part of our modern culture. By the time it's time for this website to be updated, by the time some executive takes a look at this and goes, okay, let's modernize it, will be the day that some C-suite level executive goes, why does this exist at all? Why are we bothering this? Why are we saving these parts? Why are we making schematics available? Why are we making it easy for people to fix old stuff? I probably shouldn't even be doing a video about this website because the moment somebody actually realizes it's up, they may realize their error and delete it. And this is pretty cool. This is one of the reasons why, in spite of a lot of what Sony has done when it comes to Sony Music and the Sony Rootkit and all that DRM, I buy Sony cameras. One of the comments that came up was a comment going over some of the nastier things Sony has done. And yeah, I, I, I realize they're not a perfect company of Sony Music. You have the Sony Rootkit that they were putting in their CDs back in the day, all sorts of horrible stuff. But when it comes to Sony cameras, I appreciated that the, 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 that I could I could find this online. It's a, it's a full circuit schematic with literally every single chip, every single capacitor, every single resistor that went into this camera. Uh, full full board schematic, full schematic for how everything is put together, and a website where I can actually buy all of these parts. Again, I don't really care if the website looks like it was put together in 1997 and not updated if I can actually get what I need from it. In response to that comment saying, yes, I have absolutely no illusions and I realize every company that I talk about on this channel that has done something that is pro repair or that has been pro repair in some way, shape or form is a company that I know tomorrow I'm gonna to be commenting on saying that they have done some sort of stupid BS that makes things less repairable. In my comment section, you'll often see people going back and forth saying, yeah, this company sucks for printers. I love these printers. And then somebody else go, yeah, but they also put in DRM in the paper or the ink. 
and somebody will say, yeah, I love this laptop for repairability. They're really great. And then somebody else will say, yeah, I used to be able to you know, get a service manual for it. And now they don't respond with any of the stuff anymore. And unfortunately, Sony appears to be going in that direction. So there was this post I found on iFixit. Mainboard swap, how to avoid problems. I've got a Sony with a power problem. After investigation, I found that as an essential chip killed by a dummy battery. It can't be replaced, so I have to do a whole mainboard swap. It's insanely pricey, but possible. The problem, many report that after a replacement camera may malfunction, electronic viewfinder may stop working, autofocus problems, functions get disabled. As it's costly to do, I'm very nervous. How do I guarantee it? The service manual describes how to transfer needed data from an old board, but you need Sony Adjust Station software, which isn't available. And it says over here, you need the Sony Adjust Station software. And the high part that is important here is selected. Start the adjust manual and adjust station and perform restore data to get the data. And this software is not available. And one of the more experienced members of the forum over here, Old Turkey, responded and said that anytime you're running into boards that need proprietary software installed, uh, you need Sony adjust station software, which is not available. And one of the technicians on my stream who works on cameras recently left a chat saying, you know, you, you can't get Sony's adjust station software version three if you are not a one of the certain higher tier of technician. And his information was both informative and unfortunate because this means that there are a new generation of people that may not be able to perform a number of different repairs to Sony cameras. I get it. I know every time I say I have a good experience with a manufacturer, I am... I'm realistic. I'm not a fanboy. I understand this is the world that we are moving towards. And I just wanted to get across to you all that you could have a company that just a few years ago was this friendly, where again, schematics or die. This is fully compliant with the schematics or die t-shirt over here. Look at this. Like literally every single thing on how this camera is put together. You could take any part number on this site. You could take anything here. Hell, even this. Let's just take some random thing like this. And you can put it into their website. And you can buy any one of these parts to an 11-year-old camera, to a camera company that requires that if you are replacing a part, you may need a piece of special software, and that special software is now made available to you, the person who paid three to $6,000 for the camera. That sucks. If there's anything somebody gets from this video, what I want them to understand is that this whole concept of just don't buy Apple, you're a moron for buying Apple, you're an idiot if you buy this company, you're a dumbass if you buy Canon, you're an idiot if you buy Nikon, you're like, it's, it's stupid. This whole thing where people try to elevate themselves and look at how smart and well-researched I am because I only buy this brand and model of product is ridiculous because the day will come when that company realizes that another company that restricted repair another company that restricted ownership, another company that turned everything into a subscription service, got away with it and made a lot more money. And once they realized that that company that took away your rights of ownership made a lot more money and got away with it, customers still purchased the product, they continue to stay in business, nobody really cared, they'll do it too. Every company is moving in this direction. Every single company is moving in this direction where things are more difficult to repair, where they are giving you less documentation with the products that you purchase, less availability to purchase parts to maintain what you own. Recently, I went over the fact that Apple is now requiring that you use their proprietary software that's not going to be made available to me and other repair shops similar to me if you want to calibrate the angle sensor, which used to be a basic sleep sensor on their devices. So if the sleep sensor gets corroded or dies, that's the thing that allows your computer to tell when it's open versus closed. I used to replace it and be fine. Now it must be calibrated, and it requires a very, very aggravating repair where you're literally sitting there trying to fix a chip. Not replace a chip, fix a chip at component level in order to be able to fix it. And you'll see people in the comments say, well, that's stupid. Why would you buy from a company that requires you to use proprietary software to replace something? And the reality is that most people don't know until the moment that this happens. Most people are not aware of it until somebody like me tries to replace a part and realizes, oh crap, this does not work without Apple's proprietary software. Similar to this gentleman over here that likely had no idea when he purchased this Sony camera that if he wanted to be able to perform a repair on it that he would need Sony's proprietary software that's not made available to you. The schmuck that was silly enough to believe that when they spend $6,000 on a camera that they would actually be able to repair it at the place that they chose. And the reason I use the word schmuck here is not because I think you're a schmuck. It's because the company thinks you're a schmuck. Obviously they do, because if they didn't, they would include that software on their website so that you could perform a repair if you wanted to without having to go through their authorized service center.
They think we're all schmucks. And I think that that is unacceptable. And everybody fighting amongst them, each other, like, you know, ha ha, you bought a Samsung, I bought an Apple, or ha ha, you bought an Apple, I bought a OnePlus. And it's just, as long as we're fighting amongst each other, we're not actually focusing on the things that matter, which is that every single company, and I do mean it, like 99% of them, are moving towards this direction where you just don't really own the things that you bought and paid for, where these things that you took for granted 50, 40, or even 10 years ago don't exist anymore. Because this, again, I took this for granted. I took for granted when I buy a Sony camera that they are making available everything that I need in order to be able to repair that camera, that I'm going to have access to this, that I'll be able to buy parts in this website, that if I want my functionality on my camera to work, that there's something here that'll make it available. That's not always going to be true. For now or into the future if i want adjust station 3.0 and i put that into here yep we've yeah not here it is not here This is not something that's going to get better unless more people are informed and more importantly, more people care. The unfortunate reality that I'm realizing as I get older is that while people really care about these issues, once they have encountered the issue, they usually don't care up until that point. They care once it's a problem for them. They care once the authorized repair center has quoted them $3,000 to fix a $4,000 device and the unauthorized repair center said, man, I'd really love to do this for 200 bucks, but I just don't have access to this little EXE file. That's when a lot of people see it as a problem. That's when they care. But the problem is by the time that happens, it's too late. By the time the problem affects you, it's too late. You didn't care about the problem when it affected somebody else. You thought they were an idiot for buying the wrong brand. You thought they were stupid or careless for being clumsy and dropping something. And as a result of it, now when you need help with that particular problem, you can't get it because the help is not there, because it's not available, because the issue was never resolved. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that people are going to be able to work together to be able to stop insulting each other for the choices and the products that they purchase and be able to collectively take a stand, look at the manufacturer and say, I want to own what I bought and paid for? Or do you think that they'll continue fighting amongst themselves, laughing, not caring about it as an issue until it affects them personally? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you to the gentleman that brought this up to me about Sony Adjustation 3 software. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.